Also, don't go on your bed. <laughs> go. Yeah, don't go on your bed. If you're having a good sleep. <laughs> oh no. Hi, so welcome back to my channel. This video is all going to be about sleeping, so tips on how to sleep, on getting to sleep, having a deeper sleep, and I guess more beneficial sleep and for your overall health as well. So before you go to sleep, don't spend too much time in really bright areas and try and keep um, your environments to dully lit places. Because if you spend too much time in a really bright area, then your mind will be active. So you're not giving yourself time to unwind and relax and things like that. Um, and also your senses are kind of still really heightened and active. So you just want to have, kind of take it all down, basically. So taking down your light. Also, don't go on your phone before you go to sleep. Try and say your good nights to everyone. Put your phone away and then kind of give yourself time to unwind. You don't want your mind to be active and that's what your phone does with the screen and kind of you're always kind of doing stuff on your phone. It keeps your mind active and awake. So just put your phone away before you go to sleep and allow, allow yourself time to unwind then before sleeping. Stay away from any cold water before bed. This will kind of tense up your insides and not like let you relax. So when you do go down to sleep, you're kind of not you, you, you're not you're not in a relaxed place you're all tense and so that would just generally make it harder to sleep because your body's not fluid and um, if you're having trouble sleeping then try and use some lavender oil and um, you can use this in like a diffuser or maybe just put some on your wrist or um either side of your ear so you can kind of smell it and give yourself that aromatherapy this kind of calms down your whole body and um, reduces stress and it's been used for thousands and thousands of years um, to help with deeper sleeping. So it's really like the kind of the sleeping oil um, that you want to use if you find it hard to sleep. Also, what you can do, um, everyone used to spray lavender oil on her pillow. Um, so then every time she kind of goes to sleep, you can do that. Or you can get kind of like the bedtime friends, which you put in the microwave, heat up and smell of lavender. Make sure that you're sleeping in clean sheets. You don't want a bacteria build up in your bed because your body will kind of be fighting with bacteria off after trying to sleep instead of kind of relaxing and letting it be. So make sure you have clean sheets. It also feels so much more cosier. Um, so then you'll feel more, more cosy and sleepy and slumpy that way. If you're having tea before bed, make sure that it's not caffeinated. Um, so you can have things like raspberry leaf or chamomile especially. And um, it's good for calming you down the inside. They're the kind of, you don't want to have like coffee or like English breakfast tea or Earl Grey tea or anything like that because of the caffeine. Even green tea's got caffeine in it, um, although it's really small. That just will really hinder your sleeping habits and making it harder for you to go to sleep. Try and keep all electronics three metres away from your head. I've spoken about this previously. It's really hard to do this in small rooms. My room's probably only two metres by two metres. So I, I physically can't do this. I try and keep all my electronics at the bottom of my bed. Um, I do have a plug socket literally right next to my head, but I use it intentionally to put everything down to this side. Um, so kind of all the plugs and everything is down this side to so try and keep it away from my head as much as I can. Um, it's, it's not always easy. Like I said, my only plug socket is next to my head. So you can just, there's other ways around it, like an extension lead um, and also like your phone stuff, just keeping it. Um, at the foot of the bed, even if it's on the floor, try and keep everything to to to, to, the, to closer to your feet. Also, with electronics, if you're finding it hard to sleep, then don't go on any electronics before bed. Um, these will keep your mind awake. Everything could be really active. It's not really good for your eyes to kind of have a bright screen when it's all dark. Um, so yeah, stay away from electronics. If you can't sleep, then maybe get up. You can read a book. Um, but don't go on electronics because that will keep your mind active again. You can try some like drawing or writing um, or just maybe just try some breathing exercises and things like that. Have a glass of warm water before you sleep. So a lot of people don't like to drink before they sleep. I know that Sharav especially doesn't drink anything before he goes to sleep because obviously it makes you wake up, you can use the toilet and things like that. If you, you're not a person that wakes up and uses the toilet then I was just having a warm water before you sleep. Just because you're going to be kind of sleeping for about 8 or 10 hours and you're going to have no like fluid coming into your body. So I like to just have some warm water before I sleep to kind of keep myself hydrated because I'm obviously not going to have any water for a long time. Um, if you do need the toilet a lot, which I know most people do, then maybe have the water and um, maybe like an hour before bed, maybe half hour before bed, kind of let it all run through 
and get it absorbed and things like that before sleeping. So don't ever sleep in tight pyjamas, I've spoken about this before, it's better to always just sleep with no clothes on, better for your blood flow, because um, obviously if you're trying to sleep and your blood flow can't like get through as easily, then your body's going to kind of go into mini panic mode and just your heart rate's going to increase to try and get the blood flow through everywhere. Um, but if you don't like sleeping without any clothes on, then maybe try something quite loose, um, nothing really tight because that's just not very good. For your body and also will increase your heart rate as well and um, try to stretch before bed this will kind of relax all your muscles um, to make them more relaxed also you want to kind of keep the sleeping time to healing your mind which is kind of what most of us struggle with in the modern world so when you sleep as your body kind of fixes all your muscles and everything like that makes them all at ease and relaxed and not tense so if we can do anything before we sleep to kind of just relax our physical body, then our, we won't have to do that whilst we're sleeping, and then all the healing and relaxation can be focused on the mind, which will be really, really helpful to everyone. Okay, try and keep your room as dark as you can. I know that I have blackout curtains, but even they let light in around the outside, and um, so it's good to have a face mask or an eye mask if you can. Um, I always kind of wake up with mine at the complete other side of the room, and um, maybe if you don't like the band across your head then just you can just pop it on or even like a flannel um, to put over your eyes whilst you sleep because it's a lot easier for us to get to sleep when it's dark um, and also when there's light coming in especially like flickers of light and like kind of like little bits of light they kind of pierce pierce your mind or your head and I know I always get headaches when I have like piercing light so it's just best to try and keep everything as dark as possible um, and put something over your head because a lot of people kind of put the duvet over their head but then you're kind of just not getting any fresh air in and that's not very good either so if, you, if it's not dark enough in your room then put something just over your eyes not over your whole head so another tip which i've already spoken about before is put the window on the catch at night or if you can then put it open this is because we breathe out 80 percent of our toxins so we don't want especially if we're in the contained space the whole time you don't want to be breathing all of that back in, you want fresh air to be keep circulating um, to obviously keep getting everything out and not breathing all the bad stuff back in. Don't listen to music before you sleep, this is really common and um, a lot of people listen to music because it relaxes them and it will put you in a better mood obviously if you're a music lover then it will really boost your mood before you sleep and kind of avoid bad dreams and things like that but right before you sleep it's best to kind of keep everything to calming tones and maybe like light conversations because music is quite heavy um also if especially if you're like singing along like dance along to it then your mind is active you're, you're keeping active when at this time of day you really want to be winding down um, and kind of quiet in the mind so there's not as much going on in there um have a hot drink in the evening this kind of soothes all the inside and the like aroma of all the steam and um, will put you in a more relaxed day and it kind of just feels, I know for me, I like have like a little cup of tea and I sit there and it just makes you feel cosy and homey and if, if there's something else for you that makes you feel that way then definitely try that before sleeping um, but I know for me and my friends love to just kind of sit down with a little cup of tea um, before bed and take sips. Um, if you are doing this though make sure again it's not caffeinated um, which brings on to the next tip of not having caffeine in the af late afternoon or evening. Um, a lot of people have coffee every single day and caffeinated drinks and things like that. Towards the latter half of the day, try not to do this because it will affect your sleep. Even if you do take it and then you, your sleep is fine, it will catch up with you in the long run. Um, it's just, it's, it's not very good for you at all. And especially if you're having trouble sleeping, this will definitely keep you up. Um, because obviously it, everything's going really fast in your body and everything's still awake. It's Although your mind might be quiet and going to sleep, your body isn't, and, um, and this is what needs to kind of heal whilst you're sleeping. So you can slow your heart rate down before bed by doing certain stretches. Um, I've mentioned before my favourite um, blood flow stretch is to um, kind of lay on my back and put my legs up on the wall um, straight so all the blood flow comes down my legs um, and kind of just stuck in the core area, which at first feels really horrible and disgusting. If you have blood flow problems and you have like blood clots and stuff in your family, maybe do a bit more research on how you can do like personal ones for you. Um, 
just because it, it could be potentially dangerous otherwise I'm not too sure but yeah so basically when all the blood flow is kind of not as in, in your legs as much and it's just kind of in this area your heart doesn't have to beat as fast because there's a lot of blood around it um, and that kind of slows your heart rate down and gets you ready for bed in that way. Something else you could do, I know that when I go to sleep I have so many ideas in my head like every single good idea I've had in my life is probably whilst I'm falling asleep and I always get up and I quickly try and write them on my phone um, and things like that. My mind's just really active when you're about to go to sleep. So perhaps before trying to go to sleep, um, if you have like a little diary um, and then you could just write kind of the topical thoughts in your mind right now, the things that are at the forefront of your mind, um, just trying to get, get them out, kind of get them verbalised and articulated and written down. So you're not overthinking it and thinking, oh, I've got to remember this, I've got to remember this. It's more organised. So when you do go to sleep, it's like, it's okay, I've, I've written that down, like, I remember it, like, if I need to look at it, it, it's there, I don't have to keep, keep it there, if that makes sense. It's just trying to, like, quiet your thoughts, organise it all, um, and anything that is really pressing you and keeping you active is documented already, so it doesn't stress you into thinking that you need to keep remembering it and things like that. Um, okay, so think about your posture when you sleep, this is kind of like a long-term sleep effect, um, Try, if you have enough pillows, if not, maybe invest in one, um, to use pillows to get your alignment right. So a bad thing to do is sleep on your front because then your head is like right angled the other way and that's just a big old twist in your spine. Um, if you're sleeping on your side, then put a pillow between your legs um, and if you're on your back, then try and get like a little pillow or maybe just like roll up some socks to put in the kind of arch of the back um, and also make sure your pillow comes down to kind of your neck as well so that's kind of supported up and isn't just going in. So yeah, always think about your posture, if anything feels uncomfortable then change it because that will harm your body more than that. And also as I said before, your spine is really important, it controls a lot of your moods and health, especially for headaches, um, so you just want to keep that good, you just don't, don't need to worry about it if it's not needed. Okay. Ensure that your sleeping space is tidy and don't do too many activities in it before you sleep. So if you kind of come home from work or school, or whatever, and you chill in your room, um, maybe like have dinner downstairs or chat a bit downstairs with whoever's there or maybe just chill there and um, before coming back up to sleep. Um, just because when you spend too much time in one place, your body's and your mind is really active in that place. Um, whereas if you kind of just have your room for relaxation and sleeping and things like that then your body will just automatically go into relaxation mode when it's there um especially at, at this age it's hard for us to to spend a little time in our room because everything we have is in our rooms we have to study in our rooms and things like that um so before bed don't spend too much time in the room maybe kind of get out to kind of i guess retune the energy of the room so that when you come back in you can come back in refreshed with like a different mindset and then you will go back to sleep. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a bit more spiritual, but I promise you it does work. <laughs> oh yeah, so ensure that your sleeping space is tidy. Um, any clutter around will kind of give your subconscious like a to-do list, like, oh, I need to clean that up, I need to put that there, I need to do this. Um, even if you're not thinking about it, you're, the back of your mind is, um, and you don't need that. Like it, the, the saying has always been, tidy mind, tidy room, or tidy room, tidy mind, and that is so true, I can't express how much I found that to be true, um, and it's just more like peaceful, like if everything's ordered, everything's how it should be, and clean, and neat, and organised, then like your mind is just healthier and happier, because there's so much less worries of little things, like even like getting up and having to find your socks, or find something to put on before you get out like if you have something just there and nothing else on the floor then that will just make your mind a lot calmer without even thinking about it so try and organize things a bit more and if there's any clutter on the floor move it all into one corner so it doesn't seem as bad when you sleep okay so try to keep to a sleeping schedule um, because obviously your mind kind of or your body clock gets into a routine of waking up at this time sleeping at this time um, and then when that becomes more and more and more, you'll just naturally wake up at a certain time and you won't need an alarm. Um, you can maybe set an alarm for like a few minutes later, just in case. Um, but alarms 
kind of interrupt our sleep a lot it's honestly i think every single person wakes up with an alarm because it's almost impossible not to with work and school but if you can get your body clock kind of ready for that time as well then that's just amazing for your body um and because basically you, you're, when you sleep you go through different stages um so you kind of go like from a like dozy stage into like a dreamy state and then you kind of go into like a dead sleep phase where not much is going on it's just like deep relaxation and when if so like your alarm went off in this time with the deep relaxation then when you wake up you're going to be disorientated and things like that because your mind hasn't been active um so obviously the best time to wake up is so it goes dozy dreamy relax and then dreamy dozy so obviously dozy is the best time to wake up um but obviously we don't know and our alarms don't know what what kind of stage in the cycle we're at when we're sleeping um but yeah i just want to explain that a bit because obviously people don't really know how an alarm can affect our sleep and if we're constantly waking up in the deep relaxation disorientated mode then we're going to be more irritable and that's kind of waking up on the wrong side of the bed saying because if you literally can wake up like the the time you wake up or get woken up is so critical to your day um because obviously if you wake up disorientated then you're gonna it's gonna take like a even a few hours to kind of get good again whereas if you wake up in the dozy stages you'll just be like oh, oh good morning and then just get up and go um so yeah that's really important as well so if you can sleep to a good stick to a good sleeping schedule then when you naturally wake up that'll be obviously like the dozy stage um and then it you basically won't be as irritable or moody and your sleep overall will be better because you'd have done like your deep sleep cycles okie dokie <laughs> so some vitamins to take for good sleep um again would be magnesium um they're good to kind of regulate the body keep everything in check and um, the thing is magnesium and lavender are kind of the main ones i researched for sleep um obviously lavender is like a herb or oil so it's not really a vitamin as such um, so if you do want to take any supplements to help sleep then probably magnesium would be the one for that so when you sleep ensure that the temperature of the room is comfortable also take into account that when the night comes the temperature will drop so if it's kind of cool and snuggy then when you go to sleep then when you are in the middle of the night it's going to be really cold and um, so always kind of make your room just a little bit above the ideal temperature so that when in the middle of the night the coldness does come in it's comfortable and it's not cold also make sure you have enough blankets um handy in case it does get cold um but also make sure that you're not like covered in loads of layers so that if it does get too hot you just wake up and you can't get any layers off um you want to be able to kind of like stick your leg out and things like that to cool down your body Okay, something that I love doing when I really find it hard to sleep and when I'm really anxious and sad is I like to watch ASMR videos. So I usually do this kind of as I'm winding down and then if I'm still not in a really good sleeping mode, then I'll just put it on my phone, put my phone face down so that there's no like lights or anything um, and then just kind of listen to it all and put myself to sleep that way. I don't actually experience ASMR, um, but I really do find that it's relaxing and helpful to me like even when I just watch it I like oh I just want to go to sleep um, so even if you don't experience ASMR then it can still help you go to sleep and things like that if you really don't like the idea of going on your phone near to sleep or having noises around then you can always do kind of like your own ASMR so something you can do is when you're laying down at night you can like go like this on your pillow and make noises on your pillow and to kind of get like relaxation noises like quite close to your ear and then also it doesn't take too much like movement or anything whilst you're sleeping or whilst you're relaxing before sleep um, and that can kind of just help you to unwind to get in like a cozy warm state of mind um so something else you could do so if you're thinking of buying anything for sleep would probably be a diffuser or a salt lamp so the diffuser would be good obviously to put oils out like lavender and chamomile to kind of relax the air um, and obviously they can keep coming out whilst you're sleeping to ensure that you're kind of relaxed the whole time and don't get too tense and things like that um, also the salt lamp will also clear out the toxins in the air it will absorb the excess moisture um, so just if you are thinking of investing in anything for sleep then I would suggest those things because they're kind of good for the air and good for overall health of the room 
Okay, so massages before bedtime. Um, so it's going to be done by someone else or just you yourself. Um, or it can be like a big whole body part or just like maybe just your hands. As I said before, your body will heal itself overnight. So anything we can do to release your tension in it would be really good. Hands on the feet would probably be the best areas or the neck. Um, they're quite small areas to do so it won't take too long um, and obviously you won't hurt your hands whilst you're massaging them but they are really key in kind of like nerve endings and just like tense muscles and things like that okay so allow your side okay so allow yourself to take time to unwind and get ready for bed this is really important a lot of people that i know kind of just go okay i love you night when that's not good you you need to take care of your mind and yourself um a lot of school kids do this although it doesn't seem like a problem at the time it will get you back later just try and give yourself time to relax and unwind the modern world is horrible and so many people have bad mental illness and things like that just really give yourself the time to relax and unwind because we deserve it and we we need it like we can't sleep thinking oh you should this and you should this oh my god this oh my god this or even like if your mind is okay and your body's just like oh i've been working all day i've been sitting uncomfortably all day like you do need to give yourself that time to unwind it mentally prepares you for sleep and so that when you do go to sleep you don't don't then have to unwind then you're already kind of unwound already relaxed and you can just focus that time on sleeping um a lot of things well when people say oh what time do you go to sleep and you say like, oh like nine o'clock ten o'clock and that's really kind of vague so if you don't give yourself time to unwind then really say that like you go to bed at nine o'clock and try to sleep then you're not really getting your sleep until a lot later or your quality of sleep isn't going to be as deep as it could be if you gave yourself to unwind before going to sleep um, so kind of giving that whole nighttime routine making sure everything's clean like yourself and your room um, making sure kind of any big stresses or anything you're really scared about for the next day or the next few days it's kind of gotten out it's spoken about or it's written down just so you're not burdening yourself with that whilst you're trying to sleep and that will make you a lot happier um so don't do any vigorous exercises before sleep obviously this is a given obviously the more vigorous and the more your body's moving before you sleep it, the more it's going to be like pumped and ready and like it's just going to want to keep going so if you're going to do any kind of exercise before sleep maybe do like some yoga or like some walking and um, maybe even like a light jog but don't do anything like weightlifting or like running um or even like like long jogging maybe just like a jog around the block but not nothing that would keep your heart racing and your body flowing because you want to unwind and relax and things like that okay don't go to sleep just are you ooh, so close don't go to sleep just after you've eaten a meal um i think a certain side you lay on dictates how the gut digests the food so if you're laying down in a certain way or a certain position and the flow isn't as good in your gut or things are kind of going in because like the tube into your gut and the tube out of your gut are at different heights so it, it changes the way you lay changes how the digestive system will work um, and you don't want to feel nauseous or anything before you're going to sleep or if you're falling asleep because that's going to wake you up make you feel sluggish and things like that but also make sure you don't go to sleep when you're hungry obviously this will keep you awake as well and obviously your mind's going to kind of if you need food and your body's hungry then your mind's going to kind of deteriorate as you sleep especially because you're going to be dehydrated as well you kind of just want to keep as many nutrients in as you can so eat and then sleep probably about two hours later on or maybe even three hours later um but don't sleep right away okay something else for the kind of like long-term effects is flipping your mattress often you don't want to kind of get get a bend or a dent in your mattress um where your body's been laying because you're just going to keep going down and you don't like you want to get in your mattress and be comfortable you don't want to have a ditch where your body just kind of like falls into um so yeah try and keep flipping your mattresses if there is a big dent and you've already flipped it then get a new one um and that goes for any other bedding as well if anything's getting too uncomfortable or 
too flat then either plump it up or invest in a new one because food and probably all the, the main thing that we need apart from food and water obviously um so it is definitely worth the investment okay lastly we have deep breathing and meditation um most of us do this anyways if you're finding it hard to sleep or just kind of want to be able to have a deeper sleep and kind of like a healthier sleep in the long term and try some deep breathing mechanisms and or even meditation a lot of people kind of like most of us or most people i know love meditation things like that um but then there's like the other half of people i know which are like yeah i'll do that sure um if you can't come across people like that or you are like that and you don't really want to do meditation then try some deep breathing mechanisms um or breathing mechanisms and some deep breathing as well because they will get all the oxygen in your body and in your bloods and your muscles and that will kind of make you not feel as lightheaded and stodgy inside um, and calm you down ready for bed so i hope they helped i hope my explanations weren't all over the place and all my crazy gestures and things like that um again or as always if there's anything you want to know more about then dm me on instagram or comment on the video and i will help you out further with that um but yeah so i do hope these helped if you have any suggestions of how um to get sleep and kind of long life sleep tips then do let me know as well because i'm still learning as well okay thank you bye bye